All right. So uh, first of all, thank you, uh, Chris, Giovanni, Eliano, for organizing this uh, seminar series, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to share the research, the recent research in my lab. This is an unpublished data, and uh, I'm very actually excited to share this with you today. So from recent data from American Art Association and NIH, heart disease remain a number one cause of death in the United States. And high blood pressure hypertension is among the top risk factors for heart failure. Uh, at the long term, high blood pressure leads to end organ damage and target particularly the brain, for instance, uh, increases the rate of stroke, um, kidney failure, and as I mentioned, heart failure. So in presence of a high blood pressure, the heart has to pump against a greater resistance. And in order to reduce the wall stress, it develops hypertrophy, which although it seems uh, apparently compensatory initially, it is actually, uh, it leads to uh, over time to heart failure. And indeed, the left uh, ventricular hypertrophy is an independent uh, risk factor for cardiac death. Ceramide has been implicated in heart failure. There are many studies that are coming up uh, about uh, how the plasma ceramide re remodeling in patients affected by heart failure correlate with the risk for cardiovascular events and mortality. But ceramide levels are also increased in the myocardium of human cardiomyopathy as well as in animal models. And the recent studies, from instance, from the cohort group, they start to uh, um, narrow down a little bit the ceramide species that are involved. And in particular, they show the ceramide synthase 5 is required for the lipid-induced autophagy as well as cardiac hypertrophy. However, um, in, uh, in another study, actually, when uh, SPTLC2, a subunity of uh, SPT, serine palmitoid transferase, is uh, specifically deleted in cardiomyocytes, that also leads to cardiac dysfunction, specifically to dilated cardiomyopathy. So this data, what they are telling us is the sphingolipid levels in the heart, they need to be... Uh, fine-tuned. And actually a few weeks ago we heard a very beautiful lecture from Dr. Futterman about the importance of fine-tuning. So um, outstanding question in the field is uh, we know that sphingolipids are al altered in heart failure but how sphingolipid metabolism is regulated and what is the pathological impact of these changes. So in this regard, our lab identified a few years ago a membrane protein of the ER called the NOCOB um, as an inhibitor or down regulator of SPT activity and therefore of the sphingolipid de novo biosynthesis. I wanted to give you, I want to give you a little bit of background about this protein. The gene, reticulon 4 gene, gives rise to three major isoforms. Nogo A uh, is the biggest one, Nogo B and C. Nogo A is mainly localized, confined to the central nervous system. Nogo B is more ubiquitous, uh, but still um, with uh, some specific uh, expression. For instance, it's highly expressed in blood vessels and bone marrow cells. But cardiomyocytes do not express NOGO B, hepatocytes do not express NOGO B. NOGO C is, uh, uh, is uh, the one less abundant, and you can find the NOGO C in skeletal muscle. What they have in common is uh, the uh, reticulon homology domain, which is uh, uh, formed by two transmembrane domains separated by a loop. Those transmembrane domains are about 35 amino acids. And as you can appreciate, the amino terminus of those proteins is more diversified. And uh, uh, the topology, there are different topology proposed for this protein, but uh, data from Rappaport lab, other labs, and including unpublished data from our lab, they uh, support this topology, where the two transmembrane domain, they form a hairpin loop into the membrane of the ER, and the end terminus 
the loop and the C terminus they face the cytosol. This is particularly important, for instance, especially when we wanted to study how this protein is modulated by phosphorylation. And a basic function of this protein is to regulate the morphogenesis of tubular ER. So if you stain, for instance, the endothelial cells for no-go, you can appreciate this beautiful ER pattern. Indeed, this is, is localized in the smooth ER. And in a cross-section of a mesenteric arteries from mice, I hope you can appreciate that no-go B in red is highly expressed in the vascular wall, smooth muscle cells, as well as the endothelial cells, which is the inner layer of blood vessel. And here you can appreciate the endothelium in yellow because co-localized with the isolectin before a marker for the endothelium, and that's our negative control. So, as in studies from our lab that I mentioned, we found that NOGO B interact with the, with the SPT complex. We found this in a mouse lung tissue, so in vivo, but also in different cellular systems. Those are published data, and I'm going to just show you some of them. And uh, uh, in immunofluorescent staining, NOGO B and SPTLC1, they co localize. And when we assess the SPT function in, uh, um, in uh, mouse lung microsomes, as well as in endothelial cells isolated from wild type and no go knockout mice, we found that the activity of SPT was significantly increased. And this increase in the activity of SPT reflect also in increase in sphingolipid profiles in endothelial cells. Not all of them. You don't see this dramatic increase. No go be modulated the activity of SPT, but it's not like knocking down an enzyme that creates a profound difference. So you see an, a significant upregulation in total ceramide and also in a specific ceramide species in endothelial cells, the 18, C20, and 22. I hope you can appreciate that sphingosine is almost at the double. And indeed, those cells lacking the no-go, they produce higher level of S1P in the media as well as in the plasma of these mice. Okay, what is the pathological implication of these changes uh, that no-go B exert on sphingolipid profile? And with this slice here, I just wanted to summarize and give you an overview of uh, our uh, um, findings because I really wanted to talk more about uh, an unpublished story. So NOGO B binds to and downregulate the activity of SPT and uh, in mice lacking NOGO B, SPT activity is upregulated and in endothelial cells in particular, we, uh, we could see an in global also knockout mice. We could see an higher production of S1P and uh, an hyperactivation of the S1P receptor 1 signaling. So, as you can imagine, mice knockout for no go B, they are resistant to inflammation because they have a higher uh, barrier function. And they also have a very low blood pressure and they are resistant to hypertension. Why? Because they have an increased production of nitric oxide, which is a dilator of blood vessels and therefore uh, lowers blood pressure. And also, mice are also resistant, no go knockout mice are also resistant to pathological cardiac hypertrophy. Okay, so uh, if, as I mentioned to you, no go B is not expressed in cardiomyocyte, and in this uh, uh, slide here showing the staining for no go B in uh, mouse and human heart, you can appreciate no go B expressed in the vascular wall as well as you know, the capillaries in the heart of a mouse as well as human. This is a small coronary vessel that's a vein here, but uh, in the cardiomyocytes, we are, which are those giant cells here surrounded by this red, uh, green staining, you can see that is negative. Okay, and this is the vasculature here. So, however, when you challenge the heart, for instance, with the pressure overload, which is a model of a heart failure, um, and let me explain some, some 
technical details for, for people that are not familiar with this model. So how do we induce a, a heart failure by pressure overload? We perform a surgery on the mouse by, um, by um, restricting the transverse aorta and this, we don't like it completely, only restrict the diameter. And what the, this result in increased resistance, so the heart has to pump against the greater resistance, which is very similar to the one that uh, happens in hypertension. And over time, the heart develops uh, cardiac hypertrophies and eventually uh, failure. And this is just to show you, those are the ligation that we perform around the, tr the transverse aorta. You can see they are very consistent among different mice. We also measure the delta in pressure between the left and the right carotid artery, and this is about 50 millimeter of mercury. Okay, so when we use this, uh, uh, this uh, model of a heart failure, we can see that at three days post-surgery, um, if we stay in for no-go A, B, as well as no-go A, I just want to clarify here that uh, we, there is not an antibody that can recognize only no-go B, because every single part of no-go B is also present in no-go A. So, but we can, discriminate, we can uh, uh, use this antibody against no-go A. And as you can appreciate, that three days post-stack, no-go A is highly expressed in cardiomyocytes, but not in blood vessels, where is only expressed no-go B. And we confirmed this data by Western blot analysis for no-go A and B on cardiomyocytes isolated from the heart of sham operated mice control at three days and two weeks post -tac. And what we have found, that we published this data, is that you have a transient increase in no-go expression in cardiomyocytes, two degrees after two weeks. But we have been not the first one to report that no-go is upregulated in the heart. Other groups actually have reported that one week after TAC, reticulon 4 is expression is significantly increased in the heart. And also, reticulon 4 expression increases in another model of di genetic model of dilated cardiomyopathy. And uh, also that is upregulated in patient affected by heart failure, as well as on a different model from the previous one of dilated cardiomyopathy. And a study actually found, reported, that no reticulum 4 expression is upregulated in five different models of cardiomyopathy, including heart failure. And also SNPs in the reticulum 4 gene has been, has been associated to coronary artery disease. So there are multiple evidence uh, that show the upregulation of reticulum 4 expression in the heart. What was the scope of our study? So does no-go A regulate sphingolipid and ovo biosynthesis via SPT in cardiomyocytes after pressure overload? which means after TAC. And if yes, what is the impact of a no-go A on ceramide level in cardiomyocytes when pressure overload is applied? And what is the pathological implication of these changes? So in order to study that, we used the two different genetic approach to uh, excise no-go B in the heart, specifically in cardiomyocytes. Why we use two different approach? Because uh, we wanted to validate the data because, because sometimes the CRI can give you some problems, but I wanted to underline that those two CRI have been also validated in pressure overload model, and they are consistent with each other. So in this immunofluorescent staining here, you can see that in control mice, it's so in the healthy heart, no go is expressed, the red one only in the blood vessels of the heart, but not in cardiomyocytes. And following seven days uh, by tax surgery, I hope you can appreciate the upregulation of no go A, B, in the, uh, in the heart, and particularly of no-go A in cardiomyocytes, and not in blood vessels. And uh, um, 
and you uh, you see that you don't see the staining in the mice knockout for no go in cardiomyocytes only a little bit but this is normal Okay, what are the pathological implications of the expression of no-go in cardiomyocytes? So, uh, mice lacking no-go in cardiomyocytes, they develop an exaggerated, uh, dilated cardiomyopathy when uh, they are uh, after TAC. This data here, these uh, images are three months post-TAC, and I hope that you can appreciate how much bigger those heart from this two mouse model, they are compared to controlled mice. We have quantified this by heart to weight tibial end ratio, and this increase is statistically significant. And the RT PCR for no go A here in the shows the efficiency of excision of no go A specifically in cardiomyocytes. We next assess the cardiac function. Uh, of this mice by echocardiographic analysis. And uh, here you can see the left ventricular diameter in diastole, which is the big arrow here. And this one is in systole, the small arrow here. And you can see that these diameters are much bigger in knockout mice, of course, because the heart is dilated and doesn't contract well as a dysfunction. And indeed, when we, if you look at the fractional shortening of the heart, which is an index of the heart function, uh, you can see that drops dramatically into the knockout mice compared to the wild type. But it drops uh, so much that it leads to, uh, to cardiac death. Indeed, by three months post-stack, almost 50% of the mice are dead compared to wild type mice. Okay, then uh, we wondered uh, uh, more at the molecular level, uh, does a no-go A interact with the SPT? And in this co-IP here, you can, you can see that uh, uh, um, no go here is the co uh, immunoprecipitation of the SPTLC1 and no go B, but you can see that no go A also co IP with the SPTLC1. And when we performed the, the SPT assay in the cardiomyocytes isolated from wild type and knockout mice, um, in a control mice, a uh, seven days and one month after TAC, you can see that. Um, um, SPT activity is upregulated significantly in the knockout mice seven days post-stack, but you also notice that, that is not upregulated in regular wild type mice. And then at one month it goes down to the control level. So I wanted to report here side by side that the SPTSA on the heart microsomes following the TAC. And at the same time point, the seven days, if you look at the wild type mice, after seven days of attack, SPT activity is increased in the whole heart compared to sham operated mice, and these also occurs in cardiomyocytes knockout mice. And the same profile you can see in the microsomes of the heart wild type, as well as global no-go knockout. So what this data are telling us, one, is that NOGO A binds to and downregulate the activity of SPT in cardiomyocytes. And two, that pressure overload increases SPT activity in the heart, but not in cardiomyocytes. We then measure the sphingolipid profile in cardiomyocytes at the same time point to confirm those data on SPT activity. So total ceramide in a wild type of mice, in cardiomyocytes of a wild type of mice, they don't change following the TAC. However, in absence of no go, you can see a significant increase in total ceramide level, and also the most abundant ceramide in the heart, the 20, 22, the 24, and the one with the double bond, they are also significantly increased in absence of no go knockout, as well as the, the dehydro-16 ceramide, in line with an upregulation of the sphingolipid de novo biosynthesis. So, uh, this data are telling us the ceramide does not increase in cardiomyocytes following the pressure overload, and then no-go A expression in cardiomyocytes 
refrains the ceramide from increasing following the pressure overload of the heart. So next step, we, were, we went to look at autophagy in the heart. Why? Because there has been a link um, not only between autophagy and sphingolipids, but also autophagy has been quite studied in this mouse model of a heart failure. And while some studies found that following the pressure overload, the increase of autophagy is detrimental as the inhibition result in cardioprotection, Many studies have demonstrated that the early onset of autophagy following a TAC correlates with the beneficial effect. I also wanted to mention that uh, this set of studies, they use a genetic mouse model that target directly the players in autophagy. So are really direct evidence. And particularly this study in circulation in 2016 from Dr. Sadoshima group beautifully characterized the an early onset of autophagy following the pressure overload. And then it goes down actually and to, to basal or, or even down regulated. But this early increase of autophagy, they elegantly demonstrated that it's protective in a genetic mouse model. And the pharmacologically, when they treat the mice with the TB1, which is a 16 amino acid peptide that mimics the Becklin one involved in autophagy, regulating autophagy, they were able to attenuate the cardiac dysfunction. So NOGO A has also a transient expression in cardiomyocytes following TAC, and uh, this expression is at the, in the early time point. So interestingly, when we isolated the cardiomyocytes from sham operated mice control and seven days post-TAC, while in, uh, in wild type mice, you see uh, a, very, a strong upregulation of autophagy in line with what has been published by the Sadoshima group and others. In the no go knockout cardiomyocytes mice, this uh, autophagy is significantly downregulated. And in order to further confirm this data, Linda also looked at Becklin one, and even more evident, I hope you can appreciate that there is a significant downregulation of autophagy at seven days post the protective autophagy. So I, uh, we are investigating more into details, uh, a more direct link between the ceramide profile and autophagy. But for now, I'm gonna stop here. And as a summary of these findings that I have shown you, that in a model of a heart failure induced by pressure overload, uh, what happens in cardiomyocytes is that NOGO A is a transiently expressed in the heart, specifically in cardiomyocytes, and inhibits, uh, downregulate the activity of SPT as well as ceramide levels. And this correlates with an increase of protective autophagy that leads to moderate heart failure. However, when we deleted the cardio, when we deleted the no-go A in cardiomyocytes in two different mouse models, uh, SPT activity is upregulated as well as ceramide in cardiomyocytes, and this correlates with the a significant downregulation shuts down basically autophagy and leads to a severe heart failure and death in this mouse model. So I wanted to uh, thank you, the people that uh, contributed to this project, the leaders. Uh, Ijang has been instrumental. This was a project that she started and she has done a fantastic job. She's now back in China and she is leading their own lab now. And uh, then uh, other contributors are Alice Marino with uh, uh, Mary Riemma, Linda Sasset, all the mechanistic data in sphingolipids, and Luisa Lupinelli. So um, I wanted to, I, I need to thank you. So there are many collaborators that I didn't include in this slide because they have been not involved specifically on this project. Um, 
but uh, Dr. Teresa Lua Cornell has assessed the inflammation in these mice. I didn't show you this data, there are no difference. I didn't show you this data for neither over time. And the team lie, even if uh, he was not a direct collaborator on this project, but he recruited me at Cornell and he has been instrumental in introducing me to the sphingolipids field and I'm very grateful for that. The funding agency and all of you for listening. Thank you very much.